Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at pipeline behaviors in Mediator. This video is a continuation of the previous video when we just introduced Mediator and CQRS in our ASP.NET Core API. So this is just a follow-up to see how we can actually add something like validation or logging in a very elegant way using Mediator. In this video I'm going to only focus on validation, but logging will basically use the exact same logic. Let's take a look at what the pipeline behavior is in Mediator. So in Mediator, here's me and here is the logic and this logic is part of a handler now whenever i send a request the handler takes that request and it returns a response back that's the basic model and what we did is we broke this request to a query and a command so command coming in response comes out now this logic is just anything in the handler but what happens if you want to add validation you could say just in the handle method just add a validate method call and then validate the command this could work but the problem with that is that now our handle method has also the validation and the logic and we don't necessarily want to do that what we can do instead is that if i remove this logic i can actually see mediator as sort of a pipeline so let me create this so this is where my request is going to go in and come out. But instead of having this single piece of logic, I'm going to instead move that logic here, logic. And then I'm going to have three levels here. The first one is going to be the pre-processor. The next step will be a delegate calling the next thing in the pipeline, some sort of a middleware in a sense. And the last step is the post step, anything after my logic and the way this works is request comes in it goes to the pre-level the pre-level will call the next the next will go to the next thing in the pipeline basically the logic the logic comes back and then the post can do other things after that and then the result goes back to the user and the cool thing about this is that you could very much just take the logic and move it back and add another just same thing here where you have the pre the next and the post and you can again have things go to the pre call the next go to the post this calls this this calls that this the whole thing this whole block represents the pipeline and this pipeline essentially is a bunch of layers that allow us to do different things on different levels and what we're going to do in this specific scenario is we're going to go back to the previous state. And what we're going to do is on this pre-step, we're going to say validate. And we're going to use Fluent Validation for this one. I already have a video in Fluent Validation. You can find it in my channel. But um, that's what we're basically going to do. So in the pre-step, we're going to validate, go back. If the validation fails, then we're going to return early. We don't even go to this. Uh, level but if it's fine then we're going to do all the logic and return we're not going to use the post for anything but if you wanted to use it you could uh, and we have sort of three levels on this we have the uh, pipeline behavior which is what we're going to use and then we also have pre-processor behavior which focuses on this bit or post-processor behavior which just focuses on this bit but we are going to go for the whole thing so let's just jump right into the code this video is part of my clean ASP donor core series. So if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe or ring the sub notification bell. So here are exactly where we left off in the previous video. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add two packages in the project. The first one I'm going to add is fluent validation. And the next one I'm going to add is actually the fluent validation uh, package extension about dependency injection. I'm not going to use the ASP.NET core uh, packages. Instead, what I did is I made an extension method here which will essentially uh, catch any validation exceptions thrown as part of my pipeline and convert them into this error model and return a bad request. You shouldn't necessarily do this in your actual applications. The only reason why I'm doing it is because I'm actually sharing this command, which is essentially a domain model in my controller. Uh, and I didn't want to just separate it because there would be a disconnect from the previous video. Um, but Ideally, you should not be doing this. You should have a request object, map that to a command, and then send that command to the mediator. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm keeping this. So with uh, those two packages included, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of folders. The first one I'm going to create is a directory called validation. And the next one is a directory called 
behaviors. Well, that's actually a bad name. Let's say pipeline behaviors. Cool. So with these two things out of the way, uh, the first thing I want to add is actually let's go with the validation first. So we're going to create a class and this class will be the name of the command we want to validate against. We only have one command. So we're going to just use this to create customer order command. So we copy the name and then validation new class called create customer order command validator. And this will be an abstract validator of type the command we want to validate. And now with that created, I'm going to create a constructor and I'm only going to add very simple validations because I don't want to go in depth on what Fluent Validator is. This is about the pipeline behaviors. So when I get all the validation stuff out of the way first, so I'm just going to say rule four and I want to add a rule for the customer ID and the rule I'm going to add is uh, it should not be empty. And then I'm just going to copy that and add the exact same rule for product ID. Uh, you could inject anything you want here. This will work with dependency injection and you could just validate that the customer with this ID exists and that the product with this ID exists. And you can do all sorts of custom stuff with Fluent Validator, but I'm going to keep it simple for now. I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and this one as well. And now that we added this, I want to register my validators in my um, dependency injection. So I'm going to say services dot add validators from assembly. And I'm going to say type of startup like we did before and assembly and this will register automatically anything that's an i validator or an abstract validator in the di container to be injected so that is done now the next step is to create the pipeline behavior so let's go in the pipeline behavior folder and create a new class and i'm going to name this class validation behavior now you might have seen this specific class in Stack Overflow answers or in blog posts. This is not a new class. It's probably the most common example uh, alongside logging to present this feature. So I'm just going to use the same thing essentially. Uh, and this will be a, a behavior that will accept a T of request and return a T of response. It's exactly the same as if you go into our handlers, essentially the exact same thing. Something comes in, something comes out. But instead of uh, implementing the I request handler interface, we are going to be implementing the I pipeline behavior interface. And this interface requires a request and a response. And it also requires that we say that where T request is an I request of type T response. And this only has a single method, which is the handle method, very similarly to how the handler has the handle method. But the extra thing that this method has is this delegate here, this next. And this is, if you remember the diagram, the thing I was talking about, the thing that it will actually push things to the next thing in the pipeline. So essentially everything that happens before this call is pre the behavior and everything after that is post the behavior, is post everything after the pipeline call. In this specific use case, we're not going to use the post, so we can just say return here, but we are going to use the pre to add our validators. So what I need is I need to uh, have a private read-only field of type I enumerable, of type I validator, of type T request, to essentially give me every validator in my DI container for this specific request. And I'm just going to name this validators and I'm going to inject it from the constructor. So I have my validators here, but these are all my validators. So there are a few steps I need to take in my logic for the validation. First, I need the context. So I'm going to say new validation context. And this requires a request. And then I need to find all the failures. So first I'm going to say failures equals validators dot select and then validate this context, the context that contains this specific request I want validated. And then the validation will take place and I need to do a select many to get the result, any errors, if, if any. And to check that the errors are not null and I actually have some errors, I'm going to say check for anything that is not null. So check for errors that exist. 
and then I'm gonna to list this to trigger this and here I need to say if failures dot any then throw a new validation exception with all the failures I'm gonna inject that properly and now obviously people can say and you can say as well we might be thinking hey Nick validation Hey Nick, throwing exceptions are expensive, and I agree, you should not be throwing exceptions to do your validation. But for this example, to show you how this works, I'm going to throw an exception. In your highly efficient, highly performance system, you might not want to return a T response, but you might want to return a result of T response, and instead of throwing here, you would return the bad version of that result, not the good version. And then in your pipeline, you can have a middleware that says, okay translate this into a bad request response i'm doing this with this extension method i showed you before just for simplicity uh, but you might want to go with a different approach and now with this out of the way what i need to do and the last thing i need to do actually is to just register this behavior in my di container so i need to say services dot add transient because i want this to run on essentially every time it's requested and i'm going to say type of I pipeline behavior and I'm gonna just put a comma here I'm not gonna specify the types and then instantiate this with the type of validation behavior let me find that here and again comma so register this for any T request and T response and with any T request and T response and essentially that said the code is very very minimal and the, you can find the code for the video in the description down below I'm just going to run this to show you how it works. I'm going to stick a few breakpoints here. I'm going to go in the controller. Is it the right controller? I think it's the right controller. This is totally not the right controller. I'm going to go in the oldest controller. And I'm going to put the breakpoint here. So this is the create order endpoint where we add our validation. And then I'm going to add the breakpoint here and the get all orders where we have no validation at all. And I'm also going to add a breakpoint in my validator here, maybe maybe in the constructor so i have this so if i go and create an order here you can see that the controller is being hit first so the command has not been validated it has not hit this breakpoint which means that there's nothing happening at this level when the request is coming in and now i'm going to send it to the mediator and as you can see the first thing that's being hit is the validator and it's going to go through the validation check if it matches any rules that i have and after that validator behavior is done it's gonna go through the failures, find none, and it's gonna call the next thing in the middleware. And the next thing in the middleware in this specific scenario was the handler, so we got a response back. And in fact, if you wanna see this again with a breakpoint on the handler, I can actually do this to show you that it actually calls it in the right order. So now I have one here. If I just click that button again, first thing it goes in the controller, second thing, validator, third thing, handler, and then response. So this is all working great. Now, if the product ID is zero, let's see what happens in this scenario. So first controller, then validator. This validation passes, but this one doesn't pass. So it goes through the validation behavior, finds the failure and throws the exception. And with the exception thrown, we are getting a bad request product ID, product ID must not be none. So our validation is actually working. And keep in mind, this is domain level validation. This is not API level validation, which is what we want. And just to show you that there's no validation in anything else, because, well, we did not set it up. I can just say, give me all the orders. And this just goes in the controller. There's no behavior to handle that. So it just returns all the orders. So very simple, very cleanly, we can just create the validation class, specify the command, or even the query you want to validate. And you can add all your domain level validation here, which is a very clean way. It can be confusing for people jumping in saying, okay, where is this validation coming from? But once you explain that you have this separation of your validation and your main logic, it becomes way more easier to work with it and, and literally easier to test. And we're going to see testing in a future video of this series. You can find the code for all this in the description down below. That's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.